Hey everyone, Shannon here from Journey to Peace. This video is probably going to be a tough one for me um, because I wanted to share with you a little bit about my story and my motivation around why I started this channel. I'm gonna try and just push through it and share my story with you. I was diagnosed with OCD about 12 to 13 years after it started to severely alter my life. The thing is, is that no one I knew really talked about mental health and so I certainly wasn't talking about it if they weren't talking about any of their own mental health struggles. Um, all I knew is that, you know, I've just been anxious and a worrier for as long as I can remember. I also have a very vivid and active imagination which makes for a bit of a lethal combo when it comes to OCD. <laughs> um, however, it wasn't until college that I started to realize there was something that may be wrong. Um, evidently, college age is when mental health disorders really start to surface. I started to take notice that I would only eat food from two places and I would only eat a few bites uh, and then I would count the minutes before I could have another bite. Um, and you know, the reason I did that was just in case the food had been tampered with. That was just sort of my reasoning at the time anyway as to why I was counting in between bites. Um, that turned into only being able to eat foods that came in cans. And that turned into drinking about 12 Bud Lights a night in cans, of course. Um, I was only about 120 pounds um, at the time and when I look back at pictures of me sitting with my friends, you can see almost every single bone in my back. Needless to say, at 5 foot 9 inches tall, that's very, very, very thin. I didn't really know what was happening. I had these quirks that, come to think of it, none of my friends even pointed out. For instance, I would only eat chips at this one restaurant, but I wouldn't eat the parts that touched my fingers, even though I had washed my hands about three times since I had been there. I would only drink things that came in bottles and would ask the server to open them in front of me. And you know, this went on for quite some time. Um, it really wasn't until the night I finally had to call my mom to come get me um, that I started to realize there was something very wrong going on and um, I remember that night so vividly I was in my kitchen in my tiny apartment and I opened a can of SpaghettiOs and I was so hungry it hurt and I looked down at the, at the SpaghettiOs, you know, plagued with thoughts and eventually ended up dropping it all down the sink and completely collapsing onto the really cold, hard floor. Um, I was hugging my knees and just sobbing. I felt so defeated and so confused and scared and just so, so, so hungry. Um, but this time, my hunger couldn't even pull me through. The thoughts won. And so I called my mom and she was there in the four hours it took to get to my college and we went home. I would try to explain what was going on uh, with me to people, but it just kind of sounded silly out loud. You know, my fears felt so real and so close in my head, but when I would say them out loud, they sounded ridiculous. This is around the time I started on my journey to peace. I started just researching and researching, trying to find answers. Uh, you know, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was wrong with me, and all I wanted to do was find answers. So I started to research and research. However, at some point, you know, those thoughts and those fears just kind of went away. And it wasn't until about five years after college when I had another episode. 
It was very dark and scary and felt even more intense than the last time. Um, so I finally decided to see a therapist. But at first I was so scared they were gonna think I was crazy that I chickened out um, the first few times I scheduled appointments. And then um, once it got so bad that, that I felt like I had no choice, I finally saw a therapist. It was just once. It was nice and uncomfortable, but it was nice. And then things got kind of better for a while, or at least not as intense. Or maybe I was just getting used to the pain. I, I really don't know. Uh, I don't know if I knew the difference at the time. So then I saw another therapist who I really liked and I would see her about once a year. And it was interesting because we did some meditative and hypnosis type of work. And all the while I was doing my own independent research and I stumbled across an article about OCD. As I was reading it, I found myself relating to it so intensely, almost as if I was checking off boxes on a list. This was it. I was experiencing intrusive thoughts. And it turns out everyone in the world has intrusive or unwanted thoughts. But the difference between me and them are that I obsess over them to the point where that's all I can think about all day long every single day. So I started to follow someone on YouTube called Joey Lott who talks very openly about his experience with OCD and has even come up with these exercises to use to help retrain the brain. And this was right up my alley. I was listening to him and doing his exercises every single day. I was also listening to a Buddhist nun called Rubina Corton, mostly around how we are not our thoughts and how to have a non-attached relationship with our thoughts. Both of these people brought me so much comfort at the beginning of my journey that I would listen to them all day while I was at work. And when I needed a break from all of that sort of introspection and analyzation, I would listen to stand-up comedians. One reason was to laugh. When I was laughing, I was connecting to myself and it was a reminder that in this time that seems so dark and imprisoning, I could still laugh and find joy in something. You know, the other reason why I loved to listen to stand-up comedians was because they were so comfortable making jokes out of very controversial topics and thoughts. And to me, they sounded so carefree about a thought that they had that would have sent me reeling for months, thinking there was something wrong with me or that I was a bad person um, for thinking some thought. And here they were making a joke about it. And so by listening to these stand-up comedians, sort of uh, the observational comedy, it made me think maybe thoughts aren't so serious after all. I mean, it, it doesn't mean anything. We have thousands of thoughts a day, so why do I latch on to just a few to obsess over? It was all very eye-opening and helpful at the time. It didn't necessarily make me feel any better, but it did give me perspective. The next two therapists I saw, I would ask about my having OCD and they would say, no, you don't have OCD because you don't have any compulsions. So for instance, I wasn't obsessively washing my hands anymore <laughs> um, or doing anything in hopes that doing that thing would make the thoughts or fears go away. So I was back at square one and while I have had amazing experiences and have grown so much as a person through therapy, it turns out I needed to see a psychiatrist in order to fit the puzzle pieces together. And you know, psychiatry and medicine were always a last resort in my mind only because I was terrified to see a psychiatrist and I was terrified to try medicine because through all my research, I've heard horror stories about medicine. A lot of the people in my life were encouraging me to at least try it, usually using the analogy of, you know, if you catch a cold, the doctor gives you medicine and you get better, so what's the difference? 
And up until this point, I had tried consistent therapy, meditation, yoga, rigorous workout routines, hypnosis. I even tried going to the tanning bed during the winter thinking maybe I wasn't getting enough vitamin D or something like that. There was some sort of chemical imbalance happening. I was going to church every Sunday and just, I would find myself in the pew crying into my prayers and please, you know, I was just searching, begging for, for it to stop, for, for me to, to get better. I started going to a Buddhist monastery to practice meditation and gain positivity in my life. Because in my mind, you know, Buddhism focuses on loving yourself and others. And so I thought, you can't really lose. I had even tried medicine by this point that went horribly wrong, um, which is another reason I was afraid to talk to a psychiatrist because I didn't want someone to just write a prescription. I wanted someone to tell me what was going on with me. And honestly, in my experience, that was probably the best thing I could have done because in my first five minutes of talking to the psychiatrist, she said without batting an eye, well, you have OCD, so here are your options. And I said, well, wait, my previous therapist said I don't have OCD because I don't have compulsions. And she said something to the effect of, well, that doesn't mean that you don't have OCD. Intrusive thoughts are one of the main factors of OCD and you start to obsess over them to the point where you can't think about anything else. That's OCD. Well, shit, just like that, I had my answer. The answer I was searching for and again, not that it made me necessarily feel any better, but it kind of just took the load off. It made me, she was so nonchalant about it. And you know, the reason I wanted to tell you my story is because I want you all to know whether you have anxiety, OCD, another mental health disorder that causes you pain, or even if you don't have any of those things, the point I want to make here is that this is a journey which means that every day can and will be different for you. You may go a whole week or month with little stress, anxiety, or obsessive thoughts, but then one day you may just be out of sorts. And what I want to tell you is, on those days, immediately kick it into gear and go somewhere you feel comfortable and start focusing on your breath. Just sit with the thoughts or feelings and try your absolute hardest not to identify with them. Just label them as stress or anxiety or thought or emotion and then breathe through that, but try not to associate with it. And what I mean by that is on the hard days, and I still have them, the easy thing to do is get defeated, want to give up and surrender to your anxiety, your thoughts or your emotions. But as those things start to drip, if you can turn the faucet off before the sink overflows, you will be in much better shape than if you were to let those things overwhelm you. I have written a meditation just for this. If you're having a bad day and breathing through it doesn't work, try out the guided meditation for pain relief and just let visualization of healing light wash over you. Trust me, it works. Okay, I hope this was helpful and I hope that if you are having one of those bad days where you can feel that anxiety or fear start to creep in, you can turn that faucet off with mindful breathing and meditation before it gets too bad and that metaphorical sink overflows. Thank you as always for being here and if no one has told you today, please know that you are strong and have something so special to offer this world.